what excited me the most was the opportunity to go back to the original look of the Smurfs. And we wanted to go back as far as the look from the early comic books. And the creator, Peo Culliford, created a complete universe of characters. And really, there was so much to, to mine from, from this great world he created in these books, that I had never seen interpreted before really faithfully. I wanted to make sure we were as faithful as possible to the spirit and the look of Peo's comics, only dimensionalized. And when I was given the opportunity to do that, I said, great, this is a challenge to sort of reboot the Smurfs and, and, and sort of bring them back to something that no one's quite ever enjoyed on screen. I think that this movie may be the best interpretation of the Smurfs, aside from Peo's originals, ever. Well, this story is basically uh, the Smurfs, led by Smurfette. We call them Team Smurf, actually. Uh, Smurfette, hefty, brainy, and clumsy, uh, strike out on an adventure to find this newly, they, they find out about this lost village that no one's ever heard of before. And they have to beat Gargamel to it because Gargamel thinks it's another village of Smurfs. And if he can't get the Smurfs he's been searching for all these years, he'll surprise these Smurfs somewhere in the Lost Village and take them for, him, for his own. He wants their magic. He wants the inherent magic of Smurfs. So Smurfette, brainy, hefty, and clumsy, have to stop Gargamel before he gets these Smurfs. The animation style really dates back to the animation of the 1940s in many ways. Very cartoony and bouncy and buoyant and the characters squash and stretch and they get hit and they're stars and it's just really, we tried for a rubbery, fun, bouncy quality to all of it. Demi gave us an incredible performance. She imbued Smurfette with a confidence that Demi Lovato herself is, is always talking about and singing about. Uh, what's wrong with being confident? Well, Demi Lovato brought that to Smurfette and it comes through. Um, and uh, she redefined Smurfette in many ways and I, and I think it was a great choice. Joe Manganiello brought exactly what we wanted from Hefty to the part. Joe is everything that Hefty Smurf is. Joe has many levels to him. He's not just the guy on True Blood or the guy in Magic Mike or all the different roles he's played. He is a great specimen of health and fitness, but he's a very sensitive person. And to talk to him and get to know him has been a pleasure, and it also gave us a lot of hints as to the depth of Hefty. Um, Joe is a really studied, thoughtful actor, and he brought that to the recording sessions. I think that Jack McBrayer gave us a clumsy that has a uh, truth to it that we've never quite seen before. And he understands animation, he understands voice work, and he's, he's just great at it. He's a very generous actor, he's hilarious, and that's key, of course, in any animated movie. I had seen Danny on the Ellen DeGeneres show. We had heard his voice, and there's something in the quality of his voice that just gave us that slightly nerdy, sort of goofy character, um, but also you believe it. And that's very key to me with every character is, it has to be believable, it can't be too cartoony, it's got to be, um, you, you feel like it's a real living and breathing dimensional character. 
Danny's a very good actor as well, and he was able to give us heartfelt moments, very funny moments, very nerdy moments, um, and he just also has a brand of comedy and spontaneity that uh, we couldn't have gotten just on the written page. He gave us a lot. Papa's very different in those comic books than he was in almost every other interpretation I'd ever seen. So I wanted someone who could give that. And one night, my wife and I were watching Homeland. And Mandy Patinkin, of course, who stars in that television show, started talking, and I was listening. And I love the quality of his voice, and I certainly love Mandy Patinkin as an actor for years in everything from Princess Bride to Homeland. Um, and I, it dawned on me, what about Mandy Patinkin for Papa Smurf? Um, and so, luckily, Mandy was as enthusiastic about doing it as we were about having him. And he accepted the part, and he's given us a Papa Smurf that I believe uh, will redefine Papa Smurf in a proper manner for the rest of Papa Smurfdom. Nosy Smurf, well, for that part, um, Nosy sort of rose out of nowhere. Uh, he wasn't a Smurf we had thought much about, but we just tried something, and I actually did the scratch dialogue for it, where all I did was just say this sentence he peeks in a room and he says, what's going on in here? And everyone laughed. We kept it in, we showed it, and the audience loved it. So Nosy got a few other parts in the movie. And now, Kelly Asbury is Nosy Smurf. And he's brilliant. The message of this movie really is about working together, accepting each other's differences, and finding a way to work for those differences to work together and complement each other. And as a result, work out for the good, for the greater good. <laughs>